Hello and welcome to this week's weekly drive where we talk about all things authorpreneurship, particularly in the field of writing. So this week's Brenda briefing is all about referencing. It's a bit of a dry subject, but it's a very necessary subject and it's very important to you as an author if you're looking for credibility, looking to raise that authority and to be taken seriously with the work, your heart and soul that you're pouring into your book or even blogging or any piece of writing that you do that involves you researching, you should create referencing. Now, Many people write blogs and there's no references included because it's kind of their thought leadership coming out of their head. But here's something I want you to think about before we get started. Everything that's in your head was something that you once learned from another person, an article that someone's written, a discussion that you've had with someone, because we haven't reinvent, we haven't reinvented the wheel. Hey, Laura. <laughs> Hello. Um, I'm expecting someone I know from America joining us, so we'll see what happens as well. Okay. So that's good, but thank you for coming back. Um, no, I'm just kind of like there, but I'll just continue. So this week, the weekly drive is all about referencing. Now, it's a bit of a dry subject, and it's one that authors don't like to think about because they, they just want to get the stories down. They just want to get their knowledge out in there. You know, they're, all the things that they're known for in their thought leadership. And, you know, they want to be innovative about what they know and look at it through a different lens. But unfortunately, as I was saying, nothing's new because everything that we know, it's inside our heads. Um, has come from something we've learned, a discussion we've had from somewhere, um, a, a magazine article, a book that we've read. And what we do over time is we take a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of the next thing, and boof, we then start our own creative process and we come up with our version of a philosophy that's made up of a number of philosophies. So if you think about the things that you do in your business and even in your life, you know, I bet they're made up of things you've read or, or uh, you know, in books or conversations you've had at maybe events or, you know, uh, reading blogs. They, they, they all, they're all there from somewhere. So um, just before we, we, so before we sort of jump into... Um, the whole thing about references. So if I think about, I'll ask you, so because we can have a nice conversation. So I'll tell you mine. So for example, Darren Hardy, the compound effect. Well, I never really knew much about the compound effect till I read his book and I really believe in it. So whether you um, do the same things over again that are positive and you get a great positive outcome, or if you do things that are negative, you get a negative outcome. So if you drink too much alcohol over time, you can become a, there's a risk of becoming an alcoholic. But if you constantly um, do meditation, you have more calmness within you. You've got a clearer mind. So if you don't do meditation, you're still probably going to be, oh, and get stressed out and things like that. Because it's that inner journey and it's that connection. But with the compound effect over time, think of Stephen Covey. The seven habits of highly effective people. So if you think about the, I think it might be the last one, um, the sharpening the the saw the saw. Well, sharpening the saw is just about looking to yourself. It's it's self-development, it's nurturing. It's but so someone else will take his phrase, take the concept, learn the concept, and they'll come up with other phrases, you know, like, well, we've got personal development's a big umbrella. You know, you've got spiritual connection. So, and everybody reads a wee bit and they think, they think about it and they start joining up different dots and they create something that's unique to them. So um, let's take publishing. 
So publishing for me is that I've learned I've been an author, so I've learned the process. I've learned what makes a good book. I've learned about structure. I've taken what I've learned as a teacher and I've put all these things together to create what I call the author's adventure based on a whole raft of what I've learned over 30 odd years. So no doubt there'll be other publishers if they've got a similar background to me could come up with something similar and call it something different. So that's me, and that's why referencing is important because when you use credible sources, like talking about people like Stephen Covey, he's sold millions of books, he's got in a university, he's been going 30, 40 years, you know? He's a credible um, person, although he's dead now, but his son um, maintains his whole concept and, and they've developed it for children and all sorts of things. So it's developed over time. So, Laura, can I ask you, who's influenced you and what you think today? Oh, quite a number of people. Um, and, I, and where I went to instantly was two places, actually, Brenda. Firstly was authors and, you know, I suppose the people I've read. So one is Randy Pausch um, and his book, The Last Lecture, Lessons in Living. And the affinity for me there is that he died at, at 40 of pancreatic cancer, which is what my husband died of. And the last leg lecture was a legacy to his two young sons and to his wife as how to live life fully in spite of what life throws at you. The other place I went to was the conversations that I had with people and I picked up phrases and I know exactly where they've come from. So this week I'm talking a lot about belonging in my own skin and I know exactly that conversation where that came from and it's um, a guy I was working with in the States, a guy called Dr. Keith McNally. And, and that for me is how that came into my world because it resonated so loudly. Um, and there's another one, the secret in my pocket was a client telling me that, Laura, you're just the person I need when I'm having this moment of sheer overwhelm. I message you and it's like having this little secret in my pocket, like a little person telling me how to do stuff. And that has created part of my vocabulary now because I can remember very intimately that moment. So it totally resonates for me. And so when I actually do like my book, those references will definitely be in there. Yeah, and that's the whole point. And here's, let's get rid of some myths. So a lot of people think we're thought leaders. I consider myself a thought leader, not in everything in life, but in some areas. And that's because of the depth of understanding and the wisdom that comes with age. I, I, and then I look at it through a lens and, and shift it a little bit and, and come from it from a different angle. So that creates a, a, new, a new way of looking at something. And that's what it's about. It's not like the compound effect, for example, that I spoke about earlier is that, um, I might call it something else. I haven't got a name for that, but you know, but I would talk about it. But here's the thing, because I'm saying I'm a thought leader about the more we do something, the more we, we go in that um, direction because of the energy. So I'll relate to energy, which is Dr. David Hawkins' work. So I'm taking all these people's work and I'm coming up with things I'm using, like you said, some phrases from each of them. And, and you, you create a, a vocabulary that's unique to you. Because I speak to people, not everybody's heard of the compound effect in Darren Hardy. And I'm like, really? Because I think when you love something, you think everybody's read it and it's not so. There you go. Your mind's is sitting right there. <laughs> Let, for the sake, let's do it. Okay, let's. Let's do it. Let me get a screenshot as well. Ta -da! Uh, so you you know it's it's important that we um yeah it's important that we cite these amazing people because they're further on their journey. They're more elevated and evolved. Their evolution's greater than our own. So 
just because you're creating a new thought and a new process and coming up with something unique to you um, doesn't detract from your thought leadership because um, when you, and I'll come up in the, in, in the little talk I'm going to do in a minute, when you give credibility to your source, you're going to um, amplify, uh, uh, no, exactly, uh, elevate your own status because you're aligning your own thoughts and your process and your actions with these people. You know, I, I can see it playing out on LinkedIn. I don't want to name the person right now, but there's an author who is a friend of mine and he's also one of my authors. And he he's rubbing shoulders with Stephen Bartlett and Mary Forleo and, and uh, Simon Sinek and all of these people. You know, Simon Sinek, go, um, uh, begin with why, start with why, sorry. Um, another book, it's on my shelf. Um, all that why, it, it, it's so much in business now. But it wasn't Simon Sinek that started it because when I was becoming a teacher, they um, were talking about starting with why. You know, so that was long before Simon Sinek's book came out. So, but he knew it was it was a, a concept that needed to be revisited because we've got a generational thing. So this is why referencing in your book as an author, in your blogs, anywhere, is going to raise your credibility. So let's dive into what I've prepared for today but I thought it'd be quite nice to have that little intimate discussion about it because I used to think oh if I say that people will think I'm cheating no no that that's a limiting belief you see so we're all we're on evolution that's what I say so let me share the screen and hopefully uh, I can get straight to the I don't know how this works oh, to give me to Two seconds because I need to go back in and oh then it's there. There we go. So let me go back to Zoom, share screen, and I know I had it. And let's be begin. So referencing your genius. So this is you as a thought reader. So we've already touched on some of these. So why it's important. So we already talked about credibility. Now this is the next thing on this list here is integrity. And that is my number one value and it drives me. So I've always got to be true and honest. You know, if I try to hide something or or, or like um, bend the truth, I, I don't feel good, you know. And this is the, the inner compass that you have to listen to. So you have to be authentic and true all the time. I call it being raw and real. It gives validity to what you're actually saying when you use amazing people's references, it could be university, it could be Harvard, it could be, you know, London University. It could, it, you are, again, validating that what you say has got value and is worth listening to. It also creates accountability. Now, this is exceptionally important for yourself as an author. You need to be accountable to what you're putting out there is something that's wholesome, and true and good for your reader so that they too can, with the vision that you've got for you and the mission that you're on, um, that when you put something down in black and white, it's copied out, you're accountable to what you're putting in there and you can be challenged and you need to be ready for that. So your book gives you that evidence. And of course, it's ethical responsibility. So that, you know, that moral compass linked to integrity. So let's look at what are the benefits when we reference in our book. Well, you've got academic integrity because I would always suggest that when you write, there's some there's some element of uh, academic uh, prowess in there that you're looking, what is the latest research? Which universities are researching this right now? Because they have that status so if you've got a piece of work and um, you can link it to a university, it gives you uh, more status. So I give you an example of that. I have an author, Caroline Parfait, Feel It to Heal It, and the work that she does, which is around um, total release experience. Um, her work has been validated by the University of Winchester. 
that really has given her amazing clout and has opened so many doors of opportunity that her business is really thriving and is ready to accelerate even more than it is already doing so. And that's within three years of her publishing her book. So that's good academic integrity. So if you, you reference Harvard or any um, a Russell Group Academy or Ivy Leaf in America, Ivy League, Ivy Leaf, <laughs> enhance credibility. Because you're using, like we said already, the these amazing people who are highly successful. They've got they've sold millions of books, they've got tens of thousands, if not millions of followers. It's enhanced when you align your work with them, it will enhance your credibility. And that's why people will look at you quite differently as an author. But you want to be an author of a quality, good book, brilliant book as I call them, not just any old book. So we could look at some books and you would see how credible are they just by looking what's their reference and like. Have they got six references or have they got 56 references? Um, clear attribution. So it's really important that when you reference someone that you, you do it in a clear way. And there's lots of ways to do it, but you have to pick one system and stick to it and be consistent throughout the way that you're attributing what you're saying and your thought processes um, with the the evidence that you're finding. Um, and when you reference, you're avoiding plagiarism because it will take note of it. So if you use some AI um, uh, programs like Ramily, for example, it has a, a plagiarism. Now, um, I know <laughs> you're allowed a certain amount of plagiarism because um, it's that 10% give and take. So for example, I wrote a, a sentence directly out of my own head. I never referenced anything. And uh, I uh, clicked the plagiarism and my sentence out of my own head was flagged as plagiarizing. Now, of course, um, I was well within 10%. I was like 3% or something. So I, I just ignored it. So you, you have to know when to ignore plagiarism and when you think, oh gosh, what have I written? Because if you write too much and don't paraphrase it or put it into your own language, it, it will pick it up. You it, it will pick it up so easily. So yes, read, yes, clearly um quote and reference it. But even when you're paraphrasing, make sure you're referencing with what you're paraphrasing. So it could be um it could be a blog, it could be an article, it could be an academic article, it could be a scientific article, it could be um in your book, whatever, just make sure you don't lift, copy, paste, and put in and, and say, oh, this is my work. Um, we know that a lot of it goes on, sometimes um, consciously and sometimes unconsciously, because you don't know what you don't know. And of course, it's going to strengthen your argument. So if you're saying, if you keep doing um, bad things, bad things will happen to you, or it, like, let's go back to the drinking, that's an easy one to understand. If you keep drinking over time and you don't stop and you don't cut down or whatever, you, you run the risk of becoming an alcoholic. And so therefore, if you're referencing some um, a scientific research paper and you, you want to reference that, then you're going to strengthen the argument that you've already got because you're sort of agreeing or coming up with your own perspective on it. But basically it's... A, what they're saying is underpinning your new idea. So five really good benefits there. So types of referencing, Harvard referencing. A lot of them, they're very similar. There's not a lot between them. As long, you know, it's about, do you put it in block capital? Do you put, where do you put the commas? All of these things are quite specific to each referencing system. So when you find one that you like, you keep it and it's done. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples in a minute of how you can do it just like that. Um, so it, you see here, you've got the author, you've got the name of the, uh, the title, 
You've got where it came from, which was a journal of ag agriculture and food chemistry. What volume was it? What number was it? What was the page number? Um, going that far down, this is very academic form of referencing. So author, year, title, journal, volume, issue, it's it's all set out quite clearly. This So this is taken from our handbook. So if Book Brilliance Publishing, we have a handbook that all new authors get that they can use, they can keep going back to it and find out what, what's it that I'm meant to be doing. The, the, it's another it's another place for them to go and be, you know, take some responsibility for their own learning on their journey. But equally, they've got things like this, the weekly drive, they've got the school where they can have access and ask questions. And of course, they can have um, meetings with myself. But here you can see see what we are telling um, our authors. Make sure you put the author, first name and last name. And what was the title? title? It's in italic. So we're quite specific. It, what edition, if you know it, sometimes it's not always easy to see, but if you know it, you can put in the, the edition. Um, where was it published? So this is a bit different to Harvard, as you can see. So what where was it published? And you, you get that at the front in the front of the book in the imprint. And um, who was that publisher? And um, what was the date? So we we like this, obviously, because this is what we are favouring. And for um, books, it's fine. Websites, again, this is taken from our handbook. Um, again, author, first and last name, the article, then the website, the year, and you have to write when you access that, that um, a article. So, so here, uh, I've got an example, I'll show you in one that I've just done. So I've taken my own book from 2019, but I've looked at it today. So I would have 2019 and then I would, so you can see how much longevity um, a piece of writing in your book has got when, you, when you're adding in these dates. So you need an unbroken website, HTTPS, the date the view by the author and the date of the publication. Again, very simple, but it's about just repeating the same thing every time you have to add a reference that's website. Now, some people um, like footnotes. Uh, I had a conversation yesterday. And someone was telling me they like to add footnotes. Now, it depends on the book that you're writing. I would say this is really, um, I would use this more in academic books rather than maybe some of the self-help type books that we have. Uh, and the other thing I want to make you aware of at this point is who's your audience and what kind of reference do you think they would like? Do they need um, footnotes or would they like Harvard or would they like the one that we are using it ourselves? So you can see here, they, they put the number one and then number one is that. So somewhere else on the page, there'll be a two and they'll tell you where that's taken from as well. And um, sometimes you need to go into rights. I haven't included that today, but there's something else you need to think about where you might need to get permission to use something. If it's a quote, it's it's um, not usually necessary. But if you want to um, reproduce a chunk of something from a book, you have to go through the licensing agency to make sure that you can do that. But I'll do another talk on that um, a, another time. So you just make a decision and you use it throughout. Know who you're writing for. And will your readers just want something nice and simple, like the one that we've got? Or are they someone who likes a lot of detail? So you really need to know your audience. Um, let, let me just um, stop sharing that for a moment. We'll come back to that. Let me go and um, show you um, two. Uh, oh, actually, I think we might be coming on to it. Maybe I've jumped the gun here. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I'll just show you anyway. Oh, it doesn't matter which way around I do it. So let's share screen and... Let me, um, again, let, I think I need to reopen it. Sorry about this. I'll reopen. Oh, there you go, it's going straight to it. Right, okay. I'm sure over time I'll get, I mean, I'm always resharing. Okay, so here's free citation. Good old Grammarly. Been using Grammarly for a couple of years, three years now. Didn't know they did citations. Who would have thought? 
It's amazing what you don't know what you don't know until you research. So proof in the pudding that no matter what I do, even although I know a lot about a lot of stuff, I will always research to make sure I'm up to the moment. So let's look at Grammarly. You can see I started doing one over here. So you can decide um, what is it you want to reference. Oops. What might not? I don't know why it's not working. There's a drop down menu that will give you articles, it will give you um, blogs, it will give you websites, etc. So you choose. So I decided to choose a, a book. I put in the author, the contributor. So that was me, Brenda Dempsey. So I filled this in. I don't know if I can do another one. Oh, there we go. It's going down. I might do it one live. Um, then you put in the name of the book. Well, let me see. Add contributor. The year, uh, the name of the book's further down. The year, so it was 2019. It was called Voices of Hope. The publisher at the time was Filament. So I'll be doing a second edition with my own company. The edition was the first edition. It's got 448 pages. And it was published on the 26th of the 11th, 2019. Now, I haven't put a URL in there because there's, um, there's not a URL to it, although I probably could put in my website there, so take it directly to the book. Um, and then as I'm typing it in these boxes, boom, it appears. So by the time you finish filling that in, all you need to do is copy and put it into a document, references in your own book. As simple as that. This is really clear. There's another one. Let me show you. Um, I just need to move that. Uh, can you see something called Bib Guru? Okay. So I did the same there. You just add new. And uh, it, it's exactly the same as Grammarly. You can fill it in so you can see. I went and got a blog from the internet. It was from the website Mind. Um, that's their uh, their URL, and um, I, I, it says um, access January the eleventh, twenty three AD. It doesn't like come up January. I don't know. But anyway, so then you can add your own date. Let me let me see if we can do one live. Uh, new source. So you could create if you use Bibguru, you can create a folder to put all your, your citations in the one. So you can see again, what do you want to do? What's the, the title of the book? Let's do compound effect. I've got it right here. So the compound effect, who created it? It was Darren Hardy. Darren Hardy, what was the date it was published? I don't know, I might need to make it up. Um, because it won't give me the exact date that it's published in here. It was published in 2010. So let's, we'll just say it was published, let's just say um, it's November. November 2010. Oops. A little typo there. I don't know what. Oh my God. <laughs> this is live. And uh, who was the publisher? So the publisher is Da Capio. Da Capo, actually. Da Capo. Sorry, my typing has got a wee bit slower. Da Capo. And the publisher place. Uh, let me see what it says. So you'll have your book in front of you or whatever. It's um, Boston. Boston. And as you can see, Right down there, straight away, it's got everything. Now you could, um, well, it's not even asking you to quote the the um page number on this particular one because it's not um academic. So you can see you can use that simple by the time you're finished. So Bibguru or Grammarly will allow you to create a a, a reference very easy, copy and paste into a document. Any questions about that? Do you is there anything you use, Laura? I don't use anything actually. Um, I tend, tend to just use what I create on online based on what I've I've read. But um, 
because I haven't necessarily created or haven't done a book as yet. Um, so it's only usually referencing in a, um, if I've written an article or something, yeah. referencing then. Um, I think my experience of referencing was when it was an academic paper, when I did um, mm. my psychology five years ago, when I had, ha for the audience, I had to reference it and then it was Harvard um, referencing. Yeah, well, so it. there's the, the, uh, the Harvard style as well. That, oh, uh, let me go back and just show you that again. So that, um, look, um, oh, I have, I asked it to do Harvard, um, just add it to project. So up here, look, I've oh, got yeah. style Harvard. So there's different styles. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that. You can you can decide which one you want. This mm -hmm. is American. Doesn't matter, Harvard. A, a lot of places use Harvard style. Even universities in this country will use Harvard. Um, Because my granddaughter did her degree and um, we had to do that. And she just popped everything in exactly like I showed you and it, it spit it out for her. She didn't need to think. You know, um, so only I'd known all that those years ago. <laughs> there you go. So now, now, now you can go and either get Bib Guru or get Grammarly Citation. They're free. They're yeah. free. So yeah. why, why, uh, why not use them? You know, it takes a lot of thinking out of it. You know, it's. Uh, well, I didn't know if it's Grammarly me. did the citation. I ha use Grammarly all the time, but who knew? So now, <laughs> now I will be using it with an extra dimension, Brenda. <laughs> yeah, so what you need to do, um, it isn't on the, because I've got Grammarly, Grammarly Premium Pro mm -hmm. thing, because obviously we're a publisher. Not that that's, we don't, that's not our editing, <laughs> uh, but we do use Grammarly as a starting point. And then we we obviously because Grammarly doesn't pick everything up. You need a human. You need a human. Oh my goodness, it's crazy. Definitely. But it's a good. It, it's better than nothing. But certainly here at um at BBP, we just don't we don't just use Grammarly. We usually start with Grammarly to get rid of a lot of silly things, and then we we look at it. Or sometimes we do it the other way around because I'll do a lot of structural stuff and then go through it through Grammarly, but I never knew it had a citation. And you and it's different, so you just put into Google Grammarly citation, get it up, and then just um, bookmark it. That's what I've done. I'll be using that now, and that's what I'll tell all my authors from now on. <laughs> I'll give them the choice, because um, I don't like to just be prescriptive. I just say, well, you can try this, this, or this. Usually two, this or that, this or that. <laughs> um, let's go back to the... Um, where we got to. So next one is, so here's some digital tools for um, referencing, but actually I wouldn't bother with these. These are too complicated. <laughs> um, after I did my more research, <laughs> I thought, mm -mm. so we've added the Bib Guru, but we could add Grammarly. So what I'll probably do, update this quickly before we send it out, is um, take one of these off. That's the total. I've, I've registered for that, but that's a bit complicated. So, but I would absolutely simplicity is the answer so bib guru or grammarly either of those um and then when you're referencing you need the consistency so if you if you're just using the one style you just put fill out the the one program and it will spit it out all the time exactly so you know you've got consistency you'll have accuracy um within your referencing and you'll be thorough um and the th uh, and when you have your book published with a professional um, publishing uh, a hybrid press like us, there'll be thoroughness. Every single reference is double checked. Um, so, or and if there's something that should have a reference, we'll pick that up and uh, there'll be a conversation. And then, of course, timeliness. You can do it a bit quicker, and it means by the time you finish writing your book, you've got all your references. Because quite often we've got to go back to authors and go, "Where's the references? Well, I never took any." So you can imagine how much that will set them back, you know, um, and we check every single reference. If you've got 200 references, we will check 200 references. If you've got 20, we will check 20. And if we feel there's something else needs reference, we'll have that discussion. So um, references, not just about giving credits. So, and this is what, I think this is beautiful because it's about the collective knowledge and we contribute to it. 
So things evolved. So if you think about the first motor car or the first bike, where have we come since then? Let's even go back not that many years. Let's go back to the first mobile phone. You know, you carried it about like a brick and, you know, um, but look at mobile phones now. You've got them on a watch and all sorts of stuff. You know, they're tiny, tiny. So by keeping adding to the melting pot, we create and we're innovative and we create something better. And it's obviously, it helps the academic community as well. Um, and I think I've gone on about the credibility quite a lot. Um, and again, I think it shows an author's serious about their work. If you're not serious and you just want to write a book in 30 days, ha, ha, ha doesn't exist for me. You cannot write a book in 30 days with this amount of research and everything that you've got to do to make sure your book's credible. So what it demonstrates is that you're committed to your intellectual property, to your integrity, to honesty, and to adding something of value to the world. So you want support? There you go, join the Book Brilliant Stripe on Facebook hopefully soon to be on school um, next year. Um, I'm just about to look at that. Um, you can read it. I don't need to read it out to you. But again, when you're in a community, you can you can have that conversation. It's that like-mindedness. It's sharing the tips. It's guidance. It's about, um, it's about having a accountability. It's about maybe finding someone that you can have an accountability buddy so you do need a support when you are um writing a book it can be lonely for some people but if you find somewhere that you can trust with great people in it then i would absolutely it's all about that so cuny do you have any questions laura i don't actually because we've, we've kind of covered what we've discussed really um so but no brilliant as ever thank you brenda um very you're welcome helpful. you're welcome i don't know what happened to carolyn um she's in america so who knows what's happened but anyway <laughs> um <clears throat> but good you're getting a lot of nice little one ones anything else you want to ask me about anything about business anything Oh, we can, I'll stop recording. Hold on. So <laughs> let me just finish that. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let's have it. I think I'll take this one-to-one -one little chat off the air and um, we'll see you next week in the weekly drive. And I should probably know what we're talking about next week. I do have my weekly drive folder here. You know, I'm trying to be ultra organized. So the weekly drive next week is going to be all about I'm trying to find the referencing um no nope, it's not in there so something must have changed but look out on linkedin you'll find out um what it is but come back and let's let's get some energy and get let some more people in here because uh, it'll be fantastic so until next week this is brenda saying be brilliant much love to the pits <laughs>